the best is yet to come. I want to first of all acknowledge some local officials that are here. Um, and uh, I'll start with uh, our, our supervisors in the two towns. Uh, Ron Knott is here. Ron from the town of Stuyvesant. Ron has been a real stalwart supporter of the library and of our activities over in um, Stuyvesant. He uh, lends us his grill for Big Truck Day. <laughs> so everybody uh, can thank Ron for a good meal uh, when they go to Big Truck Day, especially the little ones. Uh, Pat Gratton is here. Pat, supervisor. I won't ask Pat to tell about his first experience in the Kinder Oak Library, but uh, he told you that at the last event we had, and I think it, it's probably still the biggest memory of your life. Right? <laughs> and Patsy Leader is, is a, uh, our, a member of the town council. Here. <laughs> we have two other candidates for office. We have Bernadette Powers <laughs> and Sally Hogan in the back. If I've left anybody out, I'm sorry, and uh, but that's all I see. Okay, I want to acknowledge, um, we've had the two super, I want to acknowledge Rich Phillips, who's the deputy mayor. He's filling in today for Jim Dunham, and he represents the village. I want to say that, um, you know, trying to get a big project done uh, is, is, is a lot of work, and it requires a lot of cooperation. And I must say, uh, on behalf of the board, we have been treated very, very fairly and constructively by the Village Planning Board and the Historic Preservation Commission. I think they took their job seriously. I think we have a better product because of their review. And I want to thank Rich to the members of the, of the Village Board. Thanks from all of us for getting us to this point. Thank you. This is going to be quite an addition and quite a transformational uh, structure when we're all done which in a year we hope to be done. Uh, I want to thank as well some people who have really been involved in this. Uh, Jim Romanchuk was our contractor on the reading porch and did a wonderful job and he's been hired by us to do the big build out uh, to come. So we feel we're in good hands with Jim. Jim. And I want to thank Megan Brennan, who's here from, there she is. Megan, stand up so everybody knows who you are. <laughs> Megan has been our, <clears throat> our architect and designer and has been just a wonderful, creative, positive, constructive person to deal with. Uh, Paul Mays as well has been part of this for, we first signed a contract with them back in 2009. So this has been a quite an enterprise. Hi everyone. So in the interest of giving you a dramatic before and after shot later on, we are doing this in front of the ugliest face of the building. <laughs> it's going to be dramatically improved the next time you see it. Um, I'm so thankful to the community and the board and the friends of the library and all of the stakeholders, the Mid-Hudson support that we've gotten from our system. Gary was talking about all the different purposes this library is going to serve, community center, information hub, technology center. It sounds like a TARDIS because that's as big as that building is that they were outlining, that sounds like a lot of stuff to jam into the library. But it really is, I think, all of those things. And most importantly, there aren't that many places in the world anymore that are not apolitical, non-denominational gathering places for people to come to. And the library fills that need in the village. And it fills it all over the country in different villages. But I really think the most important thing is in an age where more and more we see every man for himself and people looking out for me first, all of your support of this library is a vote in the idea of sharing services and helping each other and coming together. And I think that that gives me, I think it's a vote for hope in our, in our current situation. And it gives me a lot of hope for the future of the village that everybody is willing to put this much effort and time and money um, into this endeavor is, is really heartening to me because libraries are about equity of access 
They are about technology more and more, but they're mostly about a place where you can come and have somebody help you without judgment, without qualification. And I really think that that's what we're achieving here is something that the village has always had, but now it's just gonna be enhanced in a way that it, it hasn't been yet. It's really exciting. And um, we're very much looking forward to more space, which will be a great thing. Uh, but also just the other, we're working with a, a technology consultant that works on a national basis. His name is Carson Block. We're really, really excited. He's the best of the best. And we're excited about the ideas he's giving us for fancy new technology for our library. And, um, you know, we have this wonderful architect and this wonderful builder who are bringing all of these ideas to life and giving them shape. So I just want to thank everybody for taking time out of your day to come here today and for all of the support you've given us and we really hope we're not going to disappoint anybody. This is going to be a really great thing and it's not going to be that long. So it feels like it's been forever already, but it's really not going to be that much longer, I promise. So, so thank you all for coming and thank you for your continued support. I'd like to now acknowledge uh, the incredible friends of the library and their president, Marie Orlando. Would you like to say a few words, Marie? We'd love to hear. Here's you. Um, I don't want to say much except that uh, from the time the Friends was established in 2005, we've been just so happy to be able to support the mission of the library and the goals of the Board of Trustees. And so you can imagine how thrilled we are now to see this great uh, goal coming very close to being reached. So the Friends plan to continue to support this effort and uh, we urge everyone here to pledge and continue to support, purchase papers, do whatever you can so that this uh, goal becomes a reality, which it's just about to be. So thank you all. People ask me what it's like to do a campaign that lasts nine years, and I said, you know, it's a little like driving to the Rockies. You know, you're out in the plains and you see these bumps <laughs> in the distance, and you drive for day after day after day, and they never get any bigger. And then finally, you're there. <laughs> and uh, it's it's both a revelation and uh, you know, kind of a you know, a, a, you know, it, it's just it's a marvelous feeling to finally be there, ready to to get started. And I want to acknowledge Mary Jo Gibson, who has always been there for us, as has Chris. Mary Jo. And there's a couple uh, that have recently gotten very involved in supporting the technology initiative that uh, Carson Block and Anna Lee and the folks at Mid-Hudson have worked on, and that is Phil and Brigitte Sherman are here. Phil and Brigitte, thank you for your generosity. Huddle family have been just incredible, incredible supporters of this library, and they deserve a hand. Before we actually talk about where we are financially, I'd like to first make sure that we all recognize the extraordinary leadership, determination, and vision that Gary Spielman has done with you. We would simply not be at this point if it was not for Gary driving us night and day. <laughs> he doesn't understand delegation, let me tell you. <laughs> he does understand micromanaging. <laughs> but we've had, it's been a great experience. It's been wonderful for me to be able to work alongside Jim. I have enormous respect for what the, the Tuttle family has done. Jim and Nora and Tom, without you three, we would be decades away from finishing this. So it really has been extraordinary. The library is very important to me because I've only been in this community for five years and I knew nobody coming here. And what I found was an incredibly welcoming way to get yourself into the community. You join a book club and uh, they tell you everything about your neighbors, things you never dreamed of. <laughs> um, no offense, Jenny. <laughs> um, but the kinds of programs that we have here mean that you really want to be able to leave some kind of legacy because this is something that's going to go on for generations. And we've talked briefly about the pavers or bricks. I call them bricks. We want you all, if you haven't already, to get your name on a brick 
so that you can leave a legacy that says a library is there for future generations. I'm doing it, I'll tell you, I'm doing it putting my grandchildren's names on the bricks because I want to bring them here, have them find their names and know how important it is that they're doing it for future generations. A brick is only $100 or if you want a big one, 250 So you can all probably find some way of saving a few pennies on a Starbucks coffee and getting yourself a brick. And I know that a lot of you have already dug deep already because the other part we need to thank is everybody here who helped the capital campaign go out and talk to a lot of you. Um, we had the board, we had friends for library, any number of people who have just been absolutely super and taking on the task of other, asking other people for money, which is not easy, as many of you know. But many of you have responded so generously and we're incredibly appreciative. So the last thing I want to do is to thank two people who've been very critical to the campaign that get overlooked a lot. One is Matt Blumenfeld at FDA, who without his <laughs> guidance, we would not have known how to come after you. He's a superlative fundraiser, so if you need a fundraiser, he's the guy you go to. So we, without his help, we would not have been able to do this. And the other is the unsung hero who's put up with having at least a dozen bosses, and that's Max Bally, who has been our computer assistant and worked in the coordinator. And if you want the brochure to sign up for those bricks, Max is the one you want to talk to, okay? So now we're going to unfold the banner to show you where we are. And you're tall. We need tall people. Well, Gary, maybe you can... Mary, Gary, can you hold the other side? Oops, you've got to we've got to unroll it. Oh, no. Keep going, guys. We don't need to bother. We're over two million. <laughs> Keep going. We're at two point one million. So we're absolutely <laughs> difference is going to come from you buying bricks, from you maybe just digging deeper or talking to other people, and we're going to have a great benefit in November when Stephen Lang is going to give a presentation of a one-man show about World War One. that's going to be superlative. Lots of other good, fun ways that you can get involved to help us get to the final point. Barry, thank you again for, for being a stalwart supporter.